So today we get to start Unit 3, and in Unit 3 we start to concentrate more on algebra. So the heart of algebra, and the part that usually makes people shy away from it, is this thing. The variable. Now we're used to seeing x, the letter x is a variable, but any letter can be used as a variable. In fact, they don't even have to be English letters. We'll often see when we get into trig next semester, you'll see you know, alpha and beta and theta. Those are the, the Greek letters, yes. Part of the Latin alphabet, Roman alphabet, all that stuff. Um, most of our language is developed from the Latin language. Just kind of went off in different directions. So anyway, any letter can be used to represent a variable. And all a variable is, is a number. It's just a number that we either don't have the value for yet, or we don't want to tell you the value for yet. So we want to keep a generic value. And a variable can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, it can be put into a formula like s equals 1 half b minus t plus w, where it's just sitting there waiting for values to be put into it. So in this case, you're waiting for values to be put in for b and t and w. And once you put those values in there, you can calculate using our order of operations like we've talked about before, find the value of s. So just kind of holding that place until we, we assign the values to them. And it may be that they have certain va a, a certain value, we just don't, haven't been told that value yet, or it may be they can take on several different values and we're gonna just try one possibility. So we write it like this so that all the other possibilities can be tried later if we want to. We could have something like this. Where in this case, x has a specific value. It's not that it's waiting for us to assign a value. There's only one value x can be. We just haven't figured out what it is yet. We have to go through and figure it out. Up here, these variables could take on whatever value that is in their range of possibilities. Here, there is only one value that x can be. So it's, it's sitting there in an equation, we're waiting to solve it. In this case, it's not even really a variable, it's just an unknown. A variable implies that it can take on varying values. Here it's not, it's really just an unknown. Or, we can run into... <clears throat> something like this. That looks similar to the equation, but here it's just... It's taking the place of an unknown number. We don't know what it is, so we're writing it in. That's the case that we're going to start out looking at at the beginning of class today, is we're going to look at that case there of just writing a, a phrase with an unknown number in it and using the variable to represent that unknown number. Partly because I think that is probably the single most difficult skill in math, is taking a situation and writing a formula or an equation to describe it. So let's take a look at that. Now we're just going to be writing number phrases. So let's say I give you the phrase a number increased by 7. What's that mean? Everybody, this is Ted May. He's my supervisor. I told you at the beginning he'd be coming in a little bit later. So. X plus 7, N plus 7, whatever letter we want to use in there. Um, could I write 7 plus X? Yeah. yeah, remember addition, we can change the order of the two numbers and it doesn't affect anything. We, call, we use the word commutative. I didn't ask you to remember that word, but just remember that it's possible. So now the question is, what are some other ways, other than this phrase, a number increased by 7, what are some other ways that we could express or write a phrase that would be represented by x plus 7 or n plus 7 or whatever variable you wanted to use? Multiplying. 
There we go. Seven more than a number. It's phrased in the opposite order, but that still could be expressed x plus 7 or 7 plus x. And just as a note, by the way, whenever I say x from now on today, I do mean any letter. It could be n plus 7, y plus 7, b plus 7. I'm just going to say x just to, for expediency. Other ways we can express x plus 7. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll shoot down the obvious one for you. X plus 7. Any other ways we can put that into words? There we go. Um, 7 greater than a number. You have to be careful how you word it because if you said 7 is greater than a number, that means something slightly different. But yeah, 7 greater than a number would still be... Since I brought that up, let me uh, put that in here. 7 greater than a number, if I said 7 is greater than a number, as we said, that means something different. What would that mean? Yeah, it means, put the X last, 7 is greater than a number like that. So be very careful. That little word is changes it a lot. Another one I'm going to throw out there is the sum of a number in 7. What does the word sum mean? Yeah. Sum is technically the result of an addition. Or a total. You've added up several things. It's the result of that. And of course there are dozens of other phrases we could pull out that would mean a number or a variable plus seven or, or whatever. Can anybody give me one? Okay, I'll give you one for subtraction. Nine less than a number. How would I express that one with x minus nine? That works. Could I do could I do nine minus x? Does that mean the same thing? No, it doesn't. 4 minus 7 would be different than 7 minus 4. It'd be, you could do negative 9 plus x. That would work. Very good. That would mean the same thing. Because remember, technically x minus 9 is x plus a negative 9. So that would work. But with subtraction, we have to be very careful because, as we've said before, subtraction is not commutative. You cannot change the order of those numbers because it will change the result. It does change the meaning of the problem. 9 less than a number, it's tricky because the 9 comes first in the sentence. You want to put the 9 first in your expression. But less than means the 9 is being taken away from something else. What are some other phrases that might mean x minus 9? Nine fewer than a number, or nine fewer than an original value. Very good. Any others? I'm going to throw out a number decreased by nine. Anything, anything else you can think of? Just say minus, yeah. You do a number minus nine or negative nine plus a number. Here's one that's very subtly different than our first one. Number less 9. That was a little bit vague. 
first one was nine less than a number, which meant the nine was being taken away from the number. The nine coming first, nine less than, means you're taking nine away from. Here, a number less nine means still you're taking nine away. It's just worded a little bit different. And kind of along the lines of a sum, what's the result of a subtraction problem called? Anybody know? The difference. Now here, the sum of a number in 7 that we had before, that was easy because it doesn't matter whether x plus 7 or 7 plus x. Here, the difference of a number in 9 doesn't necessarily tell us what order to put them in, does it? And it does matter because it's subtraction. So the rule of thumb I will give you is, unless there's something else indicating they go in the order that they're written here. The difference of a number 9 would mean x minus 9, or whatever letter you use for that number, minus 9. And of course there are dozens of other expressions we can use for subtraction. I'm going to cap out and take the easy one here. Four times a number, what's that going to mean? Okay, four times x or just 4x. Uh, we said way back in the first week, 4x really means kind of like four inches. We have four of them or four times them. Whatever x is, it occurs four times or we have it four times. What are some other expressions that would mean 4x in other sentences? There you go. A number multiplied by x. A number multiplied by x. A number multiplied by 4. Thank you. Now, would it matter if I said 4 times x or x times 4? No, because multiplication is just like addition. It's commutative. We can change the orders. It doesn't matter. So a number multiplied by 4 or 4 multiplied by a number would be the same thing. Can you think of any others? There you go. The product. Just like sum and difference mean the result of addition and subtraction, respectively, the product is the result of multiplication. The product of 4 and a number. Similar to saying the product of a number in four. Any others you can think of? <laughs> now, oh, it is a little bit different. Well, it's like I said at the beginning, this is probably one of the single toughest skills in math, is taking words and putting them into that number and variable expression. Going the other way isn't necessarily easy either at first. Yeah. Sure. None of those we can think of? Too early in the morning to be thinking? <laughs> it's okay. I'll start serving coffee on the way in the door. Well, <laughs> sure, do you like that idea? What's that? Skip the water and make it espresso. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of problems that could result from that. Um, we'll set that one aside. If you can't think of more, then no big deal. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, let's do a number split five ways. What's that imply? X divided by five. And that's probably the way most of us would start out writing it, just like that, X divided by five. A little bit more compact way of writing it. When we discussed fractions, we talked about how a fraction is a division problem, and a division problem can become a fraction. So x over 5 fits. What are some other phrases that we can use to describe division? x divided by 5. Yeah. 
problems? Yeah. Um, you could say a number multiplied by or times the inverse of 5. Now, it could be a little more specific and say times the multiplicative inverse of 5 or something like that. But yeah, that would be very good thinking. When we did fractions, remember we multiplied. When we divided fractions, we multiplied by a reciprocal. That reciprocal is what we call a multiplicative inverse. Um, so x with the denominator of 5? Okay, you could say x over with a denominator of 5, a number with a denominator of 5. Yeah, five under five under a number, or I might just say even a number over five. Yep. <laughs> Good for you. They're out there. A number. That one was so obvious. You're probably looking past it. Divided by five. And then, of course, we threw out the product and the sum and the difference. Anybody remember what it is for division? The quotient of a number in 5. Now, does it matter if we do x divided by 5 or 5 divided by x? Well, very much so. Because 10 divided by 5 is 2, 5 divided by 10 is not 2, it's 1 and a half. So it very much matters. So again, just like with the difference, when you say quotient of a number in 5, again, the order isn't necessarily implied in the wording. So again, we'd go by the order. X, or a number divided by 5 would be the number first and 5 second in that phrase. So those are just single operations. And those are... Tough enough, but not terrible. But the trick really comes when we start combining things like, oh, seven times a number increased by three. How would I rate that? 7x plus three, good. Of course, order of operations is telling us you multiply before you add. So that is saying you're multiplying the number, which is x, by 7 first, then adding the 3. <laughs> 3 plus 7x would be the same thing. You are correct. So what if I say 3 more than 7 times the number? Seven x plus three, or three plus seven x. Either way. How about three more than the product of seven and a number? Okay, so this is saying you're going to add 3 to the product, and the product is the result of 7 times the number, or the number times 7, or whatever. We're going to add 3 to it, but we want to make sure the product gets done first, because 3 isn't added to 7, it's not added to the number, it's added to the product. Do I need parentheses around this? Not really, because... Yeah, if there are more to it, possibly. But right now, order of operations says I'm going to multiply first anyway. So you don't necessarily have to have the parentheses there. But the word product does imply that it's the result of that that you're working with. In this case, since the other operation is addition, it happens after multiplication anyway. We could live without the parentheses, but it's a good notion to keep them in mind. Because my intention is to try to fool you. 
Okay, I warned you already. That kind of takes the surprise out. <laughs> With this one. Why would that one be designed to fool you? Isn't that just identical to the ones we've just done? Not quite. No, because you're multiplying after. How do I know I'm multiplying after? Because you're adding the two different terms. Okay. All of these were seven times a number. Seven times a number. Seven times that missing number, x. Seven times the variable. This one is seven times the sum. The sum is the result of an addition problem. So this one is implying the addition problem here, of course, is what? <coughs> x plus 3. It's implying that that addition problem is done first. Then we're multiplying by 7, like that. So there we have to have the parentheses in there because order of operations would tell us to multiply unless the parentheses are there. So the, the parentheses tell us you've got to add first, then you can multiply. Yep, once you're in this expression, order of operations tells us what order things would actually be done. Think about it as if, okay, if I did, because we said that that letter is just a variable waiting for a number to take its value there. If this were a number, if we put a number in there, what would have to be done first? And that's order of operations that's going to tell that to us. So let's say we have the difference of 9 and a number times 4. Well, the difference means we're going to subtract something. 9 and a number times 4. 9 minus 4x. Do I need any parentheses? No. The number times 4 is going to happen first anyway. Multiplication. The difference of 9 and whatever that result is, I could have said the difference of 9 and the product of a number and 4 to make it a little more clear, but... This is saying multiply the number by 4, then subtract it from 9. How do I know the 9 goes first here? Because the order they're written here. Again, that's one of those in those spot where the, the, the wording is a little bit vague. There's nothing in the wording that indicates that 9 would have to come first. But we just put, so in that case, we just put them in the order that they appear in. Is that different from... this. Most likely I wouldn't be asking so smugly. Right? How is it different? What's this one going to look like? Perfect. It's four times something, but it's four times the difference, which means there's a, a subtraction that's happening first, and we're multiplying the result of that subtraction. So the difference of what? 9 and a number. So 9 minus x or x minus 9? The way it's written, it has to be 9 minus x because it's in that order. What do you think? Okay. Like I said, it doesn't seem like much for the first day of this unit, but this is, like I said, one of the toughest concepts in math is that going from words into an algebraic expression. So I'm going to have you guys practice some. This is in the big book, page 322. This is exercise 12-2, do the odds there. And on page 364 through 366, this is exercise 14-3, kind of takes it to the next level, do the odds there as well. 